Hi everyone, John here from All Miniatures Great and Small and today we're going to be doing a quick look at and review of the new German uh, D-Day book. This one is covering the Waffen SS forces in Normandy in 1944. So the uh, D-Day releases continue for Flames of War and I think on the whole they've been uh, pretty successful. I have enjoyed every single book that's come out um, and the D-Day book, this latest one, and I believe it's the last one we're going to take a look at now and see if that streak um, continues. So, you know, the cover of the book's got a, a cool panther. Um, just to talk a little bit about the contents. The contents has some of the basic stuff you'd expect. Uh, you know, know your panzers, know your infantry to uh, give you a guide, a visual guide of what units look like what. Um, a history section of Operation Overlord and a cover of the um, Waffen SS special rules that you'll find in the book and then we've got uh, several formations we've got the 102nd SS Heavy Tank Battalion which gives you uh, basically an SS Tiger company um, you have the 2nd SS Panzer Division which gives you a couple of different companies to play with you've got a Panther a Panzer IV and a Stug or Stug company. Then you have the 12th SS Panzer Division which gives you the Armored SS Panzer Grenadier company to play with. The um, 26th Panzer Grenadier Regiment gives you a Panzer Grenadier company. And um, then you've got a uh, 12th SS Armored Reconnaissance Battalion, which gives you a reconnaissance company to play with. And then a whole slew of support units, which we will uh, talk about. Then we've got some painting guides and um, a couple of missions, which um, if we haven't released them already, Jake and I have filmed a couple of battle reports using those new missions. Alright, so the first thing I think we're going to talk about is what the Waffen uh, SS get as far as special rules. Um, they do get a, a cool thing called Old Hand um, for many of their units, which basically means if the formation commander uh, can give units in their formation within six inches, like leader to leader, a tactics rating of three plus. Now most of these, if not all, of the Waffen SS units have a skill rating of uh, four plus. So they're kind of dead average. But if you can get the formation commander uh, near enough, you can get a tactics rating of 3+, plus, which is going to help with your movement orders and, uh, and things like that. Uh, they have the uh, Stormtrooper rule, bazooka skirts, um, salvo, pretty much all the other things that uh, uh, Germans are, are kind of uh, expected to have. Uh, then let's go ahead and take a look at the Waffen SS force. So, as you know, you build your force by choosing one or more formations, and those are your core formations, and then adding uh, support units to taste. Um, we talked about um, all of them, but I'll just list them off again. We've got a Tiger a Panther, a Panzer, and a Stug company as formations, as well as a Panzer Grenadier, uh, a Armored Panzer Grenadier, and a Reconnaissance company. So that is a total of seven formations in the book that you could take. And then support units, you've got a whole lot of support units. You could take a wild card from another book. Maybe you want to bring in some some other Germans from another book, you can certainly do that as well. Okay, so um, this book introduces Michael Whitman again, the famous German uh, tank ace, and the Tiger SS Tank Companies, the first of the uh, companies that's in here. So, uh, you know, I'm not going to go into too much detail. Um, you, you know, if you want that, obviously you can go into the, the book, but um, the Tiger Company is not breaking any new grounds as far as what it's, it's offering. The um, Tigers themselves come in at about, I don't know, what is that, like 12, 13 points each. 
Um, and they have a hit on four. They're one of the few units that is has that careful rating of four, old version three veteran. Um, so they're hit on a four plus. Their motivation is a two plus, and their skill is a three plus. So they're they're really good. Otherwise, um, stat wise, they are a tiger tank. Um, so they they are quite formidable, and motivation wise, they're they're not running away anytime soon. Um, the formation itself, the tiger formation itself, looks like it can only take tiger uh, platoons. It can't swap one of those tiger platoons for something else, so it's just tigers. And then um, most of these new formations you can add something else like a scout or AA platoon. The tiger company lets you add an AA platoon, which I might almost consider like an auto include. One, it keeps your formation uh, more secure as far as morale on the table. Um, and two, with allies, uh, you might see air more often than not. Next we have the Panther SS uh, tank company. And this, this one's interesting. Um, you know, you have your standard HQ and two compulsory platoons in this company. Um, one of them has to be Panther, but the other one you could swap out with a Tiger. So you could take, you know, HQ Panther, one platoon of Panthers, one platoon of Tigers for this formation. Um, the optional units you can take in this formation include um, a third slot for either Panthers, Panzer IVs, or Stugs and then a fourth slot for some AA. So this um, build really lets you um, mix and match different types of tanks if you want. You could have Panthers, Tigers, and Panzer IVs all in one core formation, which is, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, the Panthers themselves are um, aggressive. They're hit on a three plus. So for a lot of German players, that's going to be a shock and something that um, you know, you're going to have to get used to playing with. Um, you still have that front armor of nine for a Panther, which is great, uh, but you are in a world where you're facing uh, AT-12 on uh, Sherman 76s and M10 tank destroyers and AT-14 with um, Fireflies for the British, for example. So you're not immune to allied fire on the battlefield plus with a top armor of one, artillery and uh, certainly attack aircraft become a threat. Uh, but you do pay uh, less for these. I think um, a five Panther platoon is like 44 points or something like that, um, which is uh, pretty, pretty cool. Um, but they are hit on a three plus, so just know that. So even at something like long range, when you're concealed, you're hit on fives. So you're hit almost twice as much as, as someone who is careful. Um, Motivation-wise, they get three, three plus, and that's the theme of the SS. You get fearless um, uh, motivation of three plus and a trained um, skill of four plus, which can be buffed by old hands, um, which the Panther, you know, HQ company or HQ platoon has. Um, so that that's an interesting uh, take on it. Uh, we haven't played with a pure uh, SS Panther company yet, but we intend to do a battle report for that uh, because we think it would be interesting. But realizing that they're hit on a 3 plus instead of a 4 plus, that's a big change. Um, you're paying less than other Panthers, but, um, you know, veteran Panthers, but you are paying for that fearless three plus uh, but you are getting hit more often all right so um, next one let's quickly talk about the Panzer IV SS tank company uh, very similar to the Panthers you can just swap it out one of your mandatory platoons need to be a Panzer IV then you can swap out the second one for a Tiger or Panther and the third one you can swap out for a Stug or Panzer IV so again um, you could have that kind of mixed tank force, Panzer IVs, Tigers, Stugs, or Panthers and Stugs, but keep that HQ a little bit cheaper by, by using the, the Panzer IVs. 
Um, these guys clock in from anywhere to five uh, to three and a half or you know, three point eight points per tank, um, depending on how you you purchase them. You know, in the HQ, I think they're a little bit more expensive. Um, in the platoon, they're a little bit cheaper because you're hitting on a three plus. Um, you're hit on a three plus again. They have that aggressive three plus rating, which is uh, dangerous for these guys. Um, they do have protected ammo of 2 plus, which is fantastic. Um, if these guys are bailed out, they are going to be getting back in their, their tanks. And their skill rating of, of trained 4 plus, again, that can be countered by old hands by keeping that formation commander nearby. Uh, they do, you know, Panzer IVs have all the standard Panzer IV stuff, bazooka skirts, um, protected ammo is really cool. They have a great gun. Um, so nothing really to dislike there. And they're cheap. The only downside, again, is that 3 plus to hit. Then uh, the last of kind of the tank companies is the Stug company. And again, this one lets you mix and match. Um, you can take a, you know, it's a mandatory Stug platoon and then either a Tiger or Panther or another Stug. Uh, and you can add a Panzer IV. So um, you could take pure Stugs, just like you could take pure Panthers or pure Panzer IVs, or you could mix it up and have one different type of tank in each one of your um, line platoons. Just depends on what you want as your HQ. So you can really mix and match. If you have a, a collection that's, you know, you've got one platoon of Stugs, one platoon of Panthers, um, one platoon of Panzer IVs, you can really uh, still build most of these uh, companies, which is cool. All right, the Stugs are um, similar. They're a little bit better than Panzer IVs in that they have a better front armor. And when you're hit on a 3+, plus, when you're aggressive and hit on a 3+, plus, uh, the better the armor you have, um, the, the longer you're going to stay alive. Um, they also have protected ammo, and they remount on a 2+, plus, and their skill is... Uh, trained again 4 plus so exactly what you'd expect for SS tanks that's kind of the theme for the SS tanks is you're gonna typically see a motivation of 3 plus a skill of 4 plus and accepting the Tigers you are hit on a 3 plus so they're not um, veterans of the campaign these are kind of fanatical guys brought in uh, to stem the tide as it were uh, next up, the Armored Panzer Grenadier Company. It's interesting. I always like the um, the mechanized infantry and the infantry companies because inherent in the uh, in the company you have a lot of formations. I mean, a lot of uh, units that you can choose from. So, for example, while you need to take uh, an HQ and two mandatory Panzer Grenadier platoons of some flavor, you can also add. You know, a machine gun platoon, a mortar platoon, a flamethrower platoon, uh, anti-tank guns, uh, typically in the form of a 7.5 centimeter pack 40, uh, grill uh, assault guns, AA guns. So you can really make your Panzer Grenadier company quite beefy with extra um, units to ensure that even if your infantry get hammered and wiped out, your company's not breaking and you don't lose the game that way. Um, and you got to be careful with these guys because they are hit on threes, just like every other SS. Um, but they uh, they are pretty cool, and they are not, uh, you know, going to break the bank as far as, as what you want. So, for example, a uh, a Panzer Grenadier platoon is ten points for both of the the seven infantry teams and the the four half tracks. You can do it, and then you can upgrade them with. Uh, Panzer Faust. Um, you can upgrade one of the half tracks, I believe. So that adds to it. But you know, ten points. That's that's pretty good. You buy three of them for thirty points plus the HQ, and you still have almost two thirds of your points uh, available for um, support options or adding a second company of something, adding a second formation, which could be cool. Then we have the uh, SS Panzer uh, Grenadier Platoon, the unarmored version, um, which is basically just a, a slightly cheaper uh, 
version without the option for half tracks. So you're paying like uh, in a Panzer Grenadier platoon like se uh, seven points for seven uh, MG teams, which is pretty nice. Um, now they're uh, obviously the same thing. They're hit on a three. Their motivation is a three plus. They are skilled, trained four plus. Um, but they uh, they do have hardened SS. So in the assault, these guys are um, destroying their enemies on a three plus. Um, so even though they are, um, you know, their their skills kind of across the board. Normally, you use your skill when you uh, try to hit someone in uh, in assault. Um, these guys are doing it on a three plus. So that that's that SS fanaticism showing through. So if you can get them into assault, I think that's where you want them, where they're not being shot at. But getting uh, aggressive 3-plus hit infantry into assault in the first place, that's the challenge, and that's where you need um, smoke and cover and diversions and all that stuff. But um, significantly, though, it is cheaper than the um, normal Panzer Grenadier, Panzer Grenadier platoon from the German D-Day book, where they are hit on 4-plus. They're careful. Um, and it's just a couple points difference, but um, they uh, they are a viable alternative, and they are a little bit cheaper, especially when every point counts. All right, so that is the uh, Panzer Grenadier platoon. They have a lot of the same options that the Armored Panzer Grenadier platoon has as far as support within the formation. Um, you know, the mortar, machine gun platoons, assault gun platoons, AA platoons which is pretty cool. Then the last uh, formation in the book is the SS Reconnaissance Company. So uh, this one is hit on a 3+, plus. motivation 3+, plus. skill is veteran 3+, plus, uh, which is nice across the board. And basically their platoons are uh, SS Reconnaissance platoons. Those are the things you have to take and um, they are basically like infantry, um, but they use the tinier half-tracks. I think they're the KFZ-250, yeah, uh, KFZ-250 uh, with machine gun. So each infantry stand gets its own um, half-track, really. So there's like seven half-tracks and seven infantry teams, which is really nice. Um, then you've got um, the, the basic support that you'd see in, in the other Panzer Grenadier type platoons, although this one does let you take a lot of Pumas, uh, you know, the SS scout troops. Um, you've got a lot of armored car scout troops and things like that. So you can be very mo mobile. These kind of uh, formations are always, um, you know, they don't break the bank. And when you take a reconnaissance company, you might be able to squeeze in... Um, two formations into a hundred points. Like, I don't think it would be unreasonable to look at, like, a Panzer Grenadier platoon plus a SS Reconnaissance Company um, within the same formation. Um, that'd be an awful lot of a huge investment in armored cars with a recon company, even you know, money-wise. But, um, you know, it's, it's doable because those guys are not very uh, expensive. And finally, we're going to talk about the support units. Um, these have a lot of the same support units you find in the German D-Day book, except these are the SS version, which typically means most of them are going to be, if they have the SS in their title, they're going to be aggressive hit on a 3-plus instead of uh, a careful 4-plus like a lot of the Germans in the D-Day book. Uh, so you get things like the Jagdpanzer IV uh, Tank Hunter Platoon. Um, you do get like the 88s that they have, uh, the 88 uh, tank hunter platoon. That's not an SS platoon, so that's still hit on a four, which is is nice. Um, you have you know observation posts, WESP SS artillery batteries, Hummel SS artillery batteries. Um, you've got Nebel Warfers, Quad AA platoons, uh, Light AA. And then you have SS uh, Heavy AA Platoon, which is an eight, uh, 88 version that's hit on a 3+. Um, 
so it, it does give you a lot of options so that that's just a, a brief talk about the um, units in the book the formations and some of the units uh, so it's giving you a lot of the same things that you got in the, the German D-Day book however they've been uh, given the SS treatment and that most of them are easier to hit but have a much better motivation and a way to improve their their skill by using the old hands rule all right the um, the other part of the book is the D-Day battles now all of these books have been pretty cool in that they've had uh, you know book specific missions some of those missions have been uh, more popular with us here at AMGAS than others but they've all been kinda cool and it's nice to have in the book and I appreciate it I like I've played two of these missions out of the, this book so far and I've liked both of them um, so this gives you basically a linked campaign um, you know you play this mission this mission this mission this mission and depending on a few things might change um, but so like the first mission in the little link campaign is uh, called encirclement uh, which is reflecting a, a counterattack against the allied uh, landings so you're, you're counterattacking allies um, some of the missions in the link campaign are out of the uh, core rulebook and others are in here so there's three dedicated missions within the book um, encirclement gauntlet and into the unknown I've, like I said I've played two of those and I've had uh, I've had uh, a good time with them I, I didn't see anything glaringly wrong with how they're set up um, and they were fun to play so that is just an overview of the book now now to come to the worth of the book should you pick up this book well that's going to be kind of up in the air if you're a German completist you're going to want this book just because you have access to all of the SS formations. Um, and if that's important to you, that's reason enough to get it. As far as your average uh, Flames of War player, does this book give you much more than what you get out of the um, German D-Day book that's already out here? Now, I think that first German D-Day book is excellent. And if you guys don't have it, you should check it out. It's a great book, and it's got a lot of um, diverse things in it. It's got the Fallschirmjäger, it's got the the, uh, the armored platoons, the infantry, the beach defense force. It's got a lot of uh, flavor in there and um, a lot of cool things to take. And almost everything there is hit on a 4+. Uh, they're careful hit on a 4+, so they're, you know, in essence, you know, veteran. Um, whereas the majority of the books and uh, units in the SS book are hit on a 3 plus. Now that just gives you a different flavor. Um, if you haven't done it, playing with a force that is hit on a 3 plus versus playing a force that's hit on a 4 plus is a dramatically different experience, play experience. And heaven help those Russians players out there that uh, play with conscript level troops that are hit on a 2 plus but um, you can imagine that it makes everything um, a little bit harder to do so it's not f I wouldn't recommend the Waffen SS book for a beginner um, I, I don't think that player if they're a brand new beginner would get that much enjoyment out of this book I think they would if they could have to buy one German book get the German D-Day book the, the first German D-Day book um, but if you want the challenge of um, a harder to use force and let's be honest that these SS units are harder to use um, then the SS book is something you might want there are some advantages don't get me wrong I'm not saying the SS have no advantages over the, the normal German book uh, but they are advantages that are a lot more subtle to use in, in combat so that motivation everything in the the SS book, almost every SS guy has a fearless 3 plus motivation, which is better than um, a lot of the Germans in the D Day book. Um, but that motivation is used um, not in as many areas as when you're getting shot and hit on a 3 plus instead of a 4 plus. So it's harder to take advantage of that. 
Your motivation is better, so therefore your force can sustain more losses before running away, because you know, you're not failing quite as often on those morale checks. Um, you're not failing as much trying to come back in an assault. Uh, so you do have those advantages. There are advantages to playing these SS guys, but um, that 3 plus is a big hurdle to newcomers, and I would um, not necessarily recommend it for a newcomer. Um, but there you go. So, so that um, my final conclusion would be, you know, if you're a completist, if you're a German player, uh, this book is is for you. Out of all four of the D-Day books, I would probably rate this one last as far as value. Um, but that's my own personal subjective opinion. Otherwise, um, the book itself is great. The missions are great. Heck, you know that the way that they price point these books. Even just the um, the history content and the mission content um, might be a worthwhile purchase to you. Um, all that stuff is great. The production value is great. Um, it's an interesting force. And uh, again, if, if that's your cup of tea, the historical aspect of it, or being a completist for the Germans, by all means, this book is a good uh, buy for you guys. Otherwise, um, for someone who's just dipping their toe into there, get the other German book first. Uh, that's a great inter introductory book. And if you're playing those very expensive German tanks out of that first uh, German D-Day book, and you're like, I really wish my tanks were hit easier, but were a little bit cheaper, um, then go look at that SS book. But otherwise, there you go. All right, guys, that is our look at the D-Day Waffen SS book, Forces in Normandy for Flames of War. Look for a matching battle report here. Um, on our channel at some point uh, really close to the release of this probably um, within the next week so i hope you guys enjoyed this please let me know what you guys think down in the comments below um, any particular units jump out at you um, do you disagree with what i said do you agree with what i said uh, i'm always willing to listen and uh, you know change my mind if if uh, I'm presented with a convincing argument but overall i like the book it's entertaining um, with uh, the caveats I listed earlier. As always, guys, uh, thanks for watching. Check us out on Facebook at All Miniatures Great and Small. You can also follow us on uh, here on YouTube by clicking that like and subscribe button. Click that bell to receive notification when we publish new content. As always, thanks for watching, and keep on wargaming.